Let me take you on a journey. It starts with this three-year-old boy. He's on his way to visit his grandmother at her place of work. It's this bustling textiles mill, and he's fascinated by it. As he gets closer, he's drawn to this object. It's a cast iron fountain. It stands uneven on a paving slab, and it's disconnected. Yet he's still curious as to why there's no water coming out of that lion's mouth. Kids, curiosity, right? So he wants to take a closer look inside the cup underneath the lion's head. And in one sudden moment, the fountain topples over and traps him inside. The adults they come rushing over, screaming for help. The help it eventually arrives, and it takes several adults to lift this 500 kg object off of him. Barely conscious, he's in need of medical attention, and he's rushed to the hospital. The doctors they stitch him up so quickly, but they fail to fully assess the damage that's been done inside. So when he wakes later, he comes to find that he's lost complete functionality within the left hand and arm. He's now disabled. The course of his life has changed. As he navigates those early years in school, he has to face multiple challenges. He's called names. He's taunted. He's got this label of that disabled boy. He's bullied. The bullying it turns physical. There'd be days when he goes to school and he's stabbed in the arm with a compass just to see if he can feel it, all for the amusement of his peers. And as he grows into his teen years, by now he's gone through so much surgery that he's forgotten how many actual operations he's had. Nerve, tendon, muscle transfers from his legs into his arms. And hand. The result of all of this is scars, and lots of them. It impacts him emotionally. It takes a toll on his mental health so much so that he asks his parents if he can have his own space. And this space is a space of escapism. It's a space where he can immerse himself in the in the fictional world of movies, books, and games. But this space is a place where. When he leaves it, he has to face the harsh realities of the world and come back to it and cry himself to sleep. In his adult years, he often has to medicate to suppress the pain from all the surgery that he's undergone. He works tirelessly and spends long hours just to keep up with his peers, not because of the workload, but because of a disability that holds him back. Remember, he can only really type with one hand, and the pain it affects his focus. Now let's revisit his journey. Let's go back, but this time apply the vision of AI and technology, and see how it would have supported him on his journey. Imagine on that day of the accident that there was an AI-based safety system there that would have detected the instability of that fountain. It would have sensed or surveilled the area and notified a team to come and cordon off the area or completely remove that fountain. He would have gone home okay. But let's say the accident still happens. AI would have completely transformed the hospital experience. He would have got to the hospital and been triaged and ID'd immediately. Bloods and medicals, history, all available. He would have been expedited to the diagnostics area, where he'd get AI-based scans, and those scans they provide results immediately. Not just results, they give recommended treatment, and that treatment comes in the form of robotic surgery. So he's prepared for the operating theatre, where robots surround him. Intricate nerve and muscle damage repaired. It might have saved his arm. The precision of these tools is beyond human capabilities. In, the, in his school days, AI can support him emotionally. He's now got an AI-based therapist. It's based on a presence and a sound that feels deeply familiar, one that he trusts. It's his favorite school teacher. It's his best friend, his grandmother, or in this case, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, <laughs> one of his favorite celebrities. And this AI therapist—it's more than just scripted responses. It responds in real time. It uses behavioral cues and voice analysis to sense his emotions and tailor guidance. It comforts him. It validates him. It reminds him that his scars do not define his worth. And one of the best things 
this AI therapist becomes a constant companion through wearable devices. It goes with him everywhere. Now, in the workplace, he's got the benefit of working with tools like ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot, and these tools are transformative to the way he works. He's got so many features that he can play around with, but one of his personal favorites is the voice-to-text analysis. He's now able to talk to his machine and tell it to do things like write an email, summarize a document. It makes him so much more productive that he's able to help other disabled colleagues. And he does so by using Microsoft Copilot Studio to create an accessible agent. And this agent is like a personal assistant that can convert documents to make them more accessible and inclusive. It transforms the way his colleagues work as well. It's also got the benefit of having adaptive devices built into it as well. It can plug into a custom keyboard, a sip and puff system, or eye tracking technology. Now, let's take this vision and these types of tools and technology and apply them to whole ecosystems. Imagine accessibility embedded everywhere. This can be achieved through augmented reality. Imagine he's wearing a pair of glasses and he's walking down the street and he needs to go to the bathroom. He can now find the closest accessible bathroom. And he can avoid obstacles on the way and hazards. Imagine somebody in a wheelchair using this type of technology. And not just that, it's got his trusted AI therapist built into it as well. Finally, the rock has come back to support him. It reminds him to take his medication and it helps him when he's feeling low and stressed. Now, this type of technology is being built today. There's so many features that I can talk about on this stage, but the TED gods will not allow me to stay up here that long. <laughs> so, let me take you back to that boy, as he stands before you on this stage. He believes in a vision where AI and technology remove barriers. Only 15% of people with disabilities have got access to assistive technology. And disability is a thing for so many people across the world, yet the world wasn't built with them in mind. So I say to the doubters and the skeptics, AI and technology is not about invading privacy or replacing human interaction. It's about empowering those that arguably need it the most. And to the policymakers, let's prioritize accessibility for all. To the designers and the engineers and the product managers, let's make sure in products and tools are inclusive for everyone. And for everybody else, let's create a world where AI and technology turns limitations into possibilities. Thank you.